ball than turf strikes, better iron strikes. I'm gonna do a video today, I'm gonna to use my divot board. Uh, if you like the divot board, I do actually have a code for this if you're thinking of buying one to save some money in the link down below, code comes up here. But if you don't wanna buy a divot board, this will still apply because I'm gonna use two T's to try and show you how these three, let's call them, self-diagnosis tools will help you learn how to improve your strikes and how to self-diagnose what the issue is of why you don't hit the ball and then the ground, you catch the ground first, hit fats and fins. Let's show you what I mean. Right, with divot board in place, I'm gonna show you three self-diagnosis tools you can use next time you're at the range if you're using your divot board. If you're not, again, I'm gonna show you with two T's as well. So first thing I'm gonna hit shot, and let's pretend I'm someone who does hit the ground first, duffs horrible shots. Hitting the ball this way, obviously the divot board shows you that as clear as day. That's frustrating. So we wanna move ball then turf. You've probably searched ball then turf, and hello, this video has popped up. But I'm gonna show you three ways to diagnose how to hit ball then turf better. So first diagnosis I want you to run, put your ball on your divot board or with your two T's, which I will show you at the end, remember. And I want you to hit a shot with your feet together. So I'm stood opposite the ball, my feet are together, and I'm just gonna literally hit a shot out there. And I can see my strike is instantly way better. Now, if you do use a divot board or your tee, which I'll show you how to position the tees, hitting that ground or contacting just before the ball is actually the truth of impact. It feels like ball than turf. You've probably searched ball than turf, but it actually is a brushing of the turf then ball and then a lot of turf because the club gets actually deflected down as it hits the ball. That's the boring science of it. So if you're using a divot board and you're kind of a, you know, a few millimeters behind the ball that that's generally a good strike. So I want you now to hit five shots feet together and monitor if that strike stays constant. Let's pretend it does. Now you're someone who probably has a problem with getting a little bit stuck over here and going at the ball which is why you hit the ground first. So practicing with your feet together is gonna to allow you to feel more stacked, turned on top of the ball. And if that improves your strikes, you should be working feet together ideas into every practice session and then applying those feelings of not moving off the ball when your feet aren't together and you're in your real stance. Do it a number of shots, three or five feet together and then compare to your standard strikes, which are probably fat if you're watching this video, or thin, if they improve, the feet together feelings is the way forward. So diagnosis tool number two. I'm gonna address the ball. I'm just using a medium iron for all of this. I'm then gonna bring lead foot into level with the ball. I'm gonna make my backswing, but as I get around here on my backswing, I'm gonna step into my address position where it should be with lead foot. And again, if that moves my strike forwards, and for me there, that's slightly too far behind, so I'm gonna do another one just to confirm if that was a one-off or is that my pattern? It's a better strike, and again, that's moved it more into position. The step and drill is more abstract, so maybe give yourself 10 goes at that rather than five or six if you're doing reps of three. That's moved it much better now into a, a strike, which I'd expect. That's good for getting people to actually shift, to actually feel like they move across a bit more, opposed to someone who might turn and then stay there and just rotate, similar to the first one. Or even if they turn on top of the ball and then actually start going back, which you still see people do. The step drill would be a great way for you to develop a feeling of that kind of shift that you see from better players. And the trick with it is to make sure you're doing the step in your backswing. Don't go to the top of your backswing then step. It's too late. Players are actually recentering from around here. So I want you to feel like you're starting to step that way as soon as your arm gets around parallel to the ground. So as you're completing your backswing. If you find that really improving your strike, then you can't do enough step drills. And feel what it feels like to the shift of your hips and your upper body. How it feels like your club's going that way and it pulls you back that way. And if that's moving those strikes into the better position, that's what we've got to do, get away from these horrible movements, which we see day in, day out. And now the last drill, one I do with lots of students and it really actually surprises them, is we're gonna use vertical ideas to actually improve strikes low point. So feet together again for this one. So we're stacking on top of the ball, but what I want to do is as I get to the top of my backswing, I wanna feel like I go down and then as I come in to hit the ball, I actually wanna feel like I go up, which will look something along these lines. 
to that one a little bit fat at the first effort. And if this happens for you as well, so I'm about an inch fat with that one. Again, as you do drills, you're gonna hit some abstract strikes at the start. But on the next go, I'm gonna give it more of a jump. I didn't jump up in time. Feet together, bounce and jump. Yeah, more of a jump. You actually saw my foot move there and you can see that's really moved strike way forward now. And I love that. The fact that I've pushed strike way, way forward with a feeling is giving me information. It's giving me data of what I need to feel to hit better strikes. The idea of feet together with the bounce is the vertical force. And you'll be surprised how much getting people to improve vertical force actually shoves low point forwards for them and gets them out of this idea of just staying down into the ball, which can just crash the club really early. So the divot board's obviously great because it's I could do this without a ball. I could just hit a practice swing here and move low point. I can train, I can practice, use the free diagnosis tools there to work out which kind of idea I might work on the most. But you don't all want to be using a divot board. So I'm just going to use these two golf tees. And with the same free protocols, I'm going to put one around two club heads behind the ball. And then the other tee, I'm going to put a good foot and about two to three inches forward. So you're going to notice how the emphasis with the tees is the push strike way forward as where lots of people are kind of, they're hitting areas around here to here. And I'm going to go through the same protocol. So if I'm someone who hits this and that tee feels a bit easier to hit and that one feels miles away, I'm going to use these protocols. So let's go to step one to feel which one feels more like I might get that tee. And don't be afraid if you hit that one, it's that one we want to move away from. So the step drill for me really feels like I'm going to get into that one, which for me, it's a combination of this way with vertical. So again, I would actually use both of the drills. I would blend them. So I would use a bit of this as well as the step to find my perfect low point and to find my perfect strike. Now, remember, if you want the divot board, we've got a code, link down below, you get discounts if you don't use the tees. Using these drills to diagnose yourself is so powerful for giving your practice way more purpose, way more direction. And if you want more of that direction and purpose with better strikes, loads more in this video that should help you really fine tune those strikes.